This is from the Gospel of St. Mark. Jesus made a tour around the village's teaching. Then he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no haversack, no coppers from their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake the, shake the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set out to preach repentance, and they cast out many devils, and anointed many sick people with oil, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Patrick was born in Kilpatrick, Scotland, around the year 402. His family was wealthy, but at the age of 16, he was kidnapped and sold into slavery in Ireland. For six years, he was a shepherd until he escaped by walking about 200 miles to take a ship to England. There he began studies for the priesthood and became a distinguished priest and then bishop. At the age of 46, he returned to Ireland with a group of missionaries. When I served at St. Patrick Parish in Bermuda, there was an image of St. Patrick on the front of the church, which commemorates his triumphant return. At Scarry's Harbor, there is a footprint on a rock, which is regarded as a perpetual testimony to that return to the Ireland. St. Patrick, first of all, sought out the man who bought him as a slave and gave him money to cover the price of ransom. The silver lining in his captivity there was that he knew the Celtic language and understood the pagan Druid religion, which dominated the population. These would serve him well in his evangelization of the Druids, even converting some of the royal household. But his ministry and that of his companions was not without difficulties. They were arrested 16 times, and on one occasion he was condemned to death. I thought of St. Patrick when I first read the Gospel of this weekend. This weekend, Jesus sends his disciples out in pairs to preach repentance and to heal. Once again, he prepares them for difficulties and hardships. He knows that they, like him, will experience rejection in preaching the good news. For many, it will not be good news because it calls them to a change of heart, a change of life. He tells them to shake the dust off their feet in those places where their message is not received. The vocation of a prophet, or in this case an apostle, is a difficult one and often means rejection and persecution. Jesus tells his disciple to take nothing for the journey, depending totally on the grace of God. He is sending them out poor and dependent, that they might return spiritually rich and spiritually confident. Indeed, the reading tells us that they healed many people, anointing them with oil, and freed many people from evil spirits. They completed their mission that Jesus had given them. In the first reading, we meet Amos, another reluctant prophet. He didn't want to serve God as a prophet because he knew it meant hardship and suffering. He preferred to be a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. However, the power of God was greater, and Amos did go and prophesy as God ordered. In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, St. Paul tells us, We were also chosen, destined in accord with the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will. He's talking about Jesus doing the will of the Father. We have been chosen through our baptism to share in the life of God and to share that life of God with others. We are those prophets and apostles of today, sent by God to give praise to his glory and to be sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. God is with us as we respond to his call, his call to each one of us. Indeed, his grace has been lavished upon us. But what has this got to do with us here and now? As I reflected on the readings on the life of St. Patrick, it became more obvious. During the six years that St. Patrick was forced into slave labor as a shepherd, I can imagine that he cursed the life he was living away from his family, his mother tongue, and his religion. We can imagine the dreams he had those years, waiting to regain them. 
Rather than lose his faith from his dramatic experience in life, he turned towards God so much that once he had his freedom, he pursued studies for the priesthood. Then he willingly left his family as a missionary to do God's will. The Celtic language he had been forced to learn now became the tool for his evangelization of the Irish, being able to speak to them from the first moment on in their own tongue. And the Druid religion, which he had seen up close while in captivity, now he was sent to use that knowledge and experience to convert its followers to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crucified and risen. Some of the bad news of his life there was now a blessing in disguise. He used those disadvantages to his advantage for the Lord. What about our disadvantages? Can we identify a negative experience that we have suffered, either through our own doing or through another, and see how through God's grace it has been turned into a blessing? How the lessons learned from that difficult time became a new beginning for us? The touching bottom helped us to start the upward ascent? Like the cross of Jesus was transformed into a sim- from a symbol of defeat to one of victory over sin and death, so too our difficulties and our disadvantages of the past can serve us for the resurrection and new life of the present and future. In the depths of our own being, we can each identify that disadvantage and now thank God that we have overcome it through his grace. And it has not only made us the person we are today, but has given us the ability to be compassionate with others and to reach out to others with the same struggle. For many years, you may find it hard to believe, I was shy and had a very poor self-image. Through prayer, spiritual direction, counseling, and a lot of love and friendship, I found myself in a completely different place in my life. I felt like a new person and felt reborn. Perhaps in your own life you can see more clearly that hand of God that led you from darkness to light, from fear to hope, from death to life. God will use those experiences to help us to reach out to others, evangelize others, and bring the good news to others. Just as God called Amos, Paul, and the apostles, he has called us to be faithful followers of Jesus and to trust in him as he sends us out to proclaim his gospel. We are those prophets and apostles of today. We are the ones that Jesus encourages to take nothing for the journey except his grace. We are the ones he prepares for struggles and difficulties as we fulfill our mission. Like St. Patrick, let us use the disadvantages of our lives as sources of new life and manifestations of the glory of God.